Hello, my name is Brian Hill, and these are my findings for how the temperature of the antenna affects a radio. The variable that I am testing is the number of pops a radio produces. A pop is feedback that is produced by a radio, as shown in this video. As you can see, there is a distinct noise that the radio makes that I am considering to be a pop. The equipment I used was a hair dryer, a thermometer, a radio, a Bunsen burner, a frequency generator, and an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is what is shown in picture 1. It is used to gather the millivolts or MV that the radio's antenna is producing. A Bunsen burner is what is shown in picture 2, and it is what I use to heat the antenna. A frequency generator is shown in picture 3, and it is what I use to get a base value for the oscilloscope. My initial experiment was to measure how the change in temperature of the antenna affects the millivolt reading recorded from the antenna. To do this, I used an oscilloscope that I hooked up to the antenna and a frequency generator that I hooked up to the antenna to get a base value. After getting this base value, I heated up the antenna with a Bunsen burner and saw how the change in temperature affected the millivolt reading from the oscilloscope. Due to unforeseen circumstances, I was only able to get data on heating the antenna. However, I did use this data to further support my data I gathered from my other experiment. My first set of data had two trials. The antenna was heated to approximately 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. My first base value was 60 millivolts and my final value after heating was 120 millivolts. My second base value was 50 millivolts, and my final reading after heating was 140 millivolts. This shows that as temperature increased, the millivolt reading increased, and the speed of the signal increased. My second experiment was done with more accessible equipment and has data for heating and cooling the antenna. I used a digital thermometer to find the temperature of the antenna. I used my body temperature to ensure that the thermometer was accurate. To heat the antenna, I used a hair dryer and I used the outside temperature to cool the antenna. Pops was my measured value and the radio station I used remained constant, which was approximately 59 AM as shown in the picture of the radio. My data showed that as the temperature increased, the number of pops decreased, and as the temperature decreased, the number of pops increased. This is shown in the graph and data chart below. On the data chart, the 70 degrees is the room temperature when I found my base value. The temperatures in the 100s are the temperatures after heating the antenna, and the temperatures in the 30s are the outside temperatures whenever I was taking my data. As my data shows, an increase in temperature decreases the number of pops and causes a faster signal, as shown in my first data set. My theory is that a colder antenna causes a slower signal. It is also my thought that a pop occurs when the signal does not reach the antenna fast enough and thus the radio produces a filler noise or a pop. In conclusion, the temperature of the antenna has a noticeable effect on how a radio processes signals, which causes the radio to give more or less feedback, depending on the temperature of the antenna. Thank you very much for your time.